Once again, we've been blessed by the God of heaven who doeth all things well. We saw fit one more time that we're able to come together on this day in this place with the express purpose of worshiping him in spirit and in truth. And for that, brothers and sisters, you and I ought to be eternally grateful. God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. He woke you up this morning. He saw that you're on your way. He's giving you the activity of your limbs, the ability to be able to put one foot in front of another. While you slumber, slapping and step, he looked at you and said, one more day. I'm here to remind you this morning, despite the difficulty that you may be going through, despite some of the personal delusionment that you may be experiencing, uh, you got a pause that means God still has a purpose for your life. And even in the midst of our heartache and in our pain, we're called to praise through it all. Amen. We don't have to fake our way through. We have to learn to praise our way Amen. through. Somebody said that praises go up, blessings sure enough come down. And I appreciate uh, so very much our brothers leading us in the devotional part of our service today. Such a spirited way. Amen. Amen. To those who may be visiting with us, we just want to let you know you're indeed our honored guest. We make no bones about here at the New Haven Church of Christ. We want you to come to be with us again and again. And again, and members of the body of Christ, we just expect to see you. Amen. Amen. And we're, we're so grateful. And I just want to let the church know we're just so appreciative uh, of your prayers and concerns for uh, my wife and her family uh, as they go through this time of bereavement. Uh, it was hard for uh, my baby to come out today, but she's here. And uh, just pray for her there. Uh, just continue to encourage so I can't, I can't really look over to that side. They might throw my lesson on. So I. Uh, but, uh, you know, you just continue to pray one with, for, and by uh, one another. I talked to the father on yesterday. My, uh, his mother is ailing as well, my grandmother. So just pray for my family as a whole uh, right now. Uh, sometimes you go through seasons of heaviness. But in spite of it all, we have to keep our faith, our hope, and our trust in the living God. And somebody said, if he'll bring you to it, he'll sure enough bring you through it. Amen. And, and that, that has to come to a point in your Christian life that that becomes more than a cliche, amen? amen. That's something that you and I live. But I'm reminded of the words of the psalmist in Psalm 34 and verse number one. He said, I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praise shall continually be in my mind. Then in the good times, I'm going to bless the Lord. Amen. And even in those difficult times, I'm still going to bless the Lord because he's worthy. Y'all don't hear me. He, I said he's worthy to be Praise. We want to direct your attention again to Numbers, the 13th chapter. Numbers, the chapter is 13. Appreciate our brothers who led the call of worship, uh, leading us in prayer and scripture, and leading us in those hymns of praise. I want to get us to, uh, let's go to Numbers chapter 14. We'll get back to 13, but we're going to start at uh, Numbers 14, beginning at verse number 1. Numbers 14, verse number 1. Before we do that, we're saying uh, verses 2 are farther along. 473 it used to be uh, farther along. Ten demons right away brought me to wonder why it should be the Shining will understand and did all by and by. Will we see? 
Amen. Amen. Somebody. Don't, don't be deterred by the negative report of others. Number three, while I give you time. Don't be deterred by the negative report of others. And number three, it's time to move forward because we have a great future. Amen. It's time to move forward because we have a great future. It's already been promised to us. In case we don't give you all the points, you know where I was trying to go. Amen. One through three. And number, one, number one again, it's time to move forward because we have a great God. Number two, don't be deterred by the negative report of others. Before I actually came to the pulpit, I, I had a sidebar with some of our young men uh, this morning, and they said, uh, Brother Duke, you know the Ravens are going to lose today. <laughs> but I'm here to remind you, just like I reminded them, don't be deterred <laughs> by the negative report <laughs> of, uh, of others. Amen. Amen. So, by some of the chuckling, you might know where that, that, that hater racer came from. Amen. 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 Uh, uh -huh. And number three, it's time to move forward because we have a great future. Brothers and sisters, I'm here to remind you all today, despite what you may be going through, we serve a great God. In the midst of a pandemic, in the midst of civil unrest in some cases, in the midst of a divided government, in the midst of, uh, you know, it's almost an uprising or insurrection, if you will, we still serve a great God. He's large and he's in charge. There were many pundits out there. There were many dissenting voices about the demise of our nation and all of this. But, but, but I'm still here to remind you just like the song says, he's got the whole world in his hand. Even the little bitty babies in his hand. The God we serve, he's still in control. When, when God gets off of the throne, that's when I start to worry. Amen. There has been times of, of unrest before. There has been times of division before. We may have never lived through a pandemic, but we read several times about plagues throughout the scriptures that ravaged the land and even killed many of God's people. It's important for us to be mindful, and I talked to you uh, even last week about the importance of wake-up calls. Amen. God is sending each and every one of us, he's sending our nation a wake-up call. You are not invincible. Even some of the greatest nations in the midst of time, Rome used to be the greatest epicenter of power in the world at one time. America and all of its greatness is filled with pride on so many fronts. God has the ability to be able to humble every single one of us. Yeah. We don't know up from down, in, or out. But this is a time to get your business right with God. This is a wake-up call for the church Amen. to stop playing church. Yeah. To become genuine with your Christianity. Yeah. I can't tell you, it's always a phone ringing throughout the course of the week. Somebody I know that's passed out of here. In the state, out of the state, in another state, regardless of the dynamic and the ages of varying. Amen. One of the praise leaders at the Mountain View Church of Christ, uh, Gerald, he uh, led worship on last week and he went over to the crime room and actually uh, the, the, they had that quiet off area and he collapsed and he died right on site. Oh, and the prime of is like 41 years old. They got the recording. He was leading his song last week. Mm -hmm. Didn't make it home. Jesus. Paramedics had to come to the church. See, sometimes we just think that we have time. Amen. But I'm here to remind you, nobody else told you, it's not guaranteed. Amen. And there are too many of us that play Russian roulette with your soul. Amen. It's time to grow up and get serious about the business of God. Amen. 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 In our text today, we have under consideration Moses, uh, one of God's great servants, and he has given, uh, he's received a word from the Lord. He said, Moses, uh, God said to Moses, I'm giving you a land. It's, it's a good land, one that flows with milk 
and honey, one, one that's plentiful, for one that will be bountiful, one that will be beneficial to my people. Any place your foot tread, he said, I'm giving it to you. I, I know there are some inhabitants in the land right now. It might not look like yours, but I'm telling you, Moses, I'm giving it to you. And at the beginning of chapter 13, well, if you look at chapter 11, that the uh, Israelites are complaining, you know, God, you know, we're tired of uh, uh, manna and we want some quail, so we send some quail and just this is just not too far after he got them over on the Red Sea. You remember Pharaoh were chasing them. They had the Red Sea in front of them, Pharaoh and his army behind. But, you know, there was fear among the people. They started grumbling then. He brought us out here to die. You remember that? That sounds similar, right? In chapter 14. You know, people don't change their colors too often. So that, that's the reality. They were, they were fearful. Then Moses, he had talked to God. He said, God, I don't see our way through this thing. And, and then he said, Moses, take heart. And then Moses said to the people of God, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. By the sense of the waters began to congeal to the left and to the right. And the children of Israel went through on dry ground. They make it through on the other side, and when Pharaoh and his army gets about to the middle, the waters came back together and drowned Pharaoh in all of his army. And after the Lord delivered them by a mighty hand, it, this is the same God when they were in 400 years of Egyptian bondage, they were crying out to God, Lord, these taskmasters are too hard. We're going to turn ourselves back to you. So he dispatched one of his servants, Moses, look, who was on the run. God has, has said, Moses, I need you to go down to Pharaoh and tell him to let my people go. And Moses is looking like, Lord, are you talking about me? I can't go back to the land of Pharaoh. That's where I ran from because they have wanted posters of me because I killed a man before I left. He said, Moses, don't worry about that. He said, let me tell you something. He said, the people that seek your life, they're dead already. I have given you an assignment. And sometimes, you and I, we try to get out of the assignment that God is calling us to do. Moses began to say, well, Lord, who am I going to say that sent me? I don't have any authority in that land. Tell him, he said, tell him I am that I am sent you. You remember that? He said, well, Lord, uh, 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 you know what? What am I going to use? I don't know. He said, well, what's in your hand? It's a staff in your hand. Throw that staff on the ground. You remember the staff became a snake. Exodus chapter 3 and chapter 4. You remember that? And then he said, take that, uh, uh, take the snake by the tail. And then it became a staff again. He said, Moses, put your hand into your bosom. And he put his hand and it became leprous. He said, put it back in again. And then it was like a newborn baby skin. God was trying to show Moses, son, I'm with you. I'm calling you to an assignment that I won't allow you to fail if you trust me. Then Moses was fearful. He said, it was fearful. He said, it was fearful. He said but I, I, I got a stuttering problem. I, I, I can't go. I, I, I can't speak well. He said, he said, listen, who made your mouth? <laughs> so you got to be careful continue to talk about the things that you can't do when God is calling you to it. Let me tell you something. God doesn't call the qualified. He qualifies the call. Amen. Amen. Uh huh? That there's some realities with this thing. Well, well, if you read in chapter 12, at the beginning of chapter 12, you know, Moses' uh, brother and sister, Miriam and Aaron, they started uh, hating on uh, Moses because he had married an Ethiopian woman. He married a black woman, and they kind of had a real problem with that. And Moses, they ain't stop you from getting that woman you talk well enough in. Hmm. Well. But sometimes when we don't want to do What's up? What God is calling us to do, we make excuses. Amen. Say that. He says, your brother is about to come on up here. Look, look, I'll use him. He will be your mouthpiece. But listen, I'm not removing you from this assignment. And then he remembered uh, Pharaoh was this and he had to go through the course of all of these plagues that God sent at the hand of Moses on his behalf. And he sought these people who were in bondage, his people. He said, listen, you will be my people and I will be your God. And they made themselves through up to the Red Sea. And before you know it, a couple of days later, they said, we thirsty out here. It's hot. He done brought us out here to die. At least when we was in slavery, they give us a war. See, people don't know what they want. Why are you crying out to God because slavery is so bad? Now you want to go back. So he said, hit the rock, Moses, and water came forth. You remember? Then God said, man, they came every single day. He said, listen, don't be greedy. Don't take too much. I'll make sure provision is made every single day. I'm trying to show you throughout the course of this that God we serve is Lord. He's in charge. He's a great God. He's the God of provision. I don't want you to forget that. 
Then they got to the point, they said, look, I'm tired of, I'm tired of manna. We got the water thing. Uh, you know, they ain't made juice boxes yet, but I, I guess we can deal, keep dealing with the water. But then he said, listen, I don't want manna anymore. Those sweet cakes and things that came down from heaven, we want something else. I want some meat. So God set them quick. You got some of y'all are carnivorous. Is that it? There, there, there's some realities with that. And then God said, Quail. But then they still complain. God said, Listen, I promise you, I'm taking you into the land, the land to, of Canaan, the land that flows with milk and honey. And, and Moses is, is channeling his people to this particular place. And God sends a word at the beginning of chapter 13. He said, Listen, send them out to spy it out. He said, no, listen, send them out so that they can see that will help build their confidence that what I said is true. So he called them throughout the course of the text at the beginning of chapter 13 on down to about verse number 17. He called leaders from every single nation of the tribe of Israel. Out of the 12, look, he put the leader, somebody who had some vision, somebody who was respected among the people. And look, these were some people who were supposed to have some insight. Go out and spy out the land. And the Bible tells us they went into the land. And, and it was, as God had said, he said the, the land was plentiful. And they brought back some of the fruit. And it was, it was large. And, and, and they saw it would be a good land. He said, search it out. But see, listen, we're going to have to take this territory. God's given it to us. We might have to knock some people out to get it. But listen, we got to remember the promises of God. He said, look, go in and see what other cities are they walled, are they fortified? What, you know, what kind of people dwell in the land? So they made their assessment of that, that it was a walled city, that it was fortified. And, and then they came to find out that even five uh, of the enemies of the Israelites dwelt in the land of Canaan. So sometimes that, that makes people fearful. But I want to remind you today don't forget God's call even in the midst of fear. Don't allow your fear to deter you from the assignment that God has placed on your life. Obstacles will always be there. But see, God has placed us here as members of the New Haven Church of Christ to take territory for Him. Amen. That's why He calls us to be lights even in the midst of darkness. He said, well, have you heard about New Haven? It's dangerous around here. Yes. That's why they need the light of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. That's why he's calling us to be lights even in the midst of the darkness that's around. He don't want you to hide your light. People need to see the light and the love of the Lord in you, permeating from you. Amen. This is not a covert operation. We don't need any undercover Christians. Amen. Ain't nobody undercover today. Everybody out the closet and kick the doors off. Hey, ain't that somebody? Amen. The children of God have to be willing to stand up and stand out. Amen. Representing our king. He says, listen, go out. Stop the land so the issue becomes when they bring the report back. Mm. Notice what the Bible says in verse number 25 of our text. Numbers chapter 13, beginning at verse number 25, the Bible says, And they returned from spying out the land 40 days. Now they departed and came back to Moses and Aaron and all the congregation of the children of Israel in the wilderness of Paran and Kadesh, and they brought back word to them, to all the congregation, and showed them the fruit of the land. They estimated some 500,000 to a million people. Uh, they're bringing back word about what they found. Remember, remember, the promise was Moses. He said, listen, this is your land. land okay? This is the land I'm giving you. Don't worry about who's there. If I say it's your land, it's your land. They went with that premise. But see, I have to remind you that this is a faith walk. Paul gave the admonition to walk by faith. Not just by sight. Because sometimes uh, things that you see are not always what they appear to be. Amen. Hmm. Notice what the Bible says in verse number 27. Then they told him and said, We went to the land where you sent us, and it does flow with milk and honey. Okay, okay. So what God said was true. Okay. He says, and, and this is the fruit. We brought back the fruit of the land. Here, here's some evidence. 
But then they said, nevertheless, you got to be careful with nevertheless. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, he said, the people who dwell in that land, they're strong. I mean, he says, uh, uh, the cities that fortified, they're large. Moreover, we saw the descendants of Anak there. Uh, the descendants of Anak were those who were deemed to be giants. They were also uh, literally rendered the long necked ones, if you will. And they're descendants of the Nephilim, if you will. And, and the Bible begins to say uh, in the text, notice in verse number 29, the Amalekites dwell in the land on the south, and the Hittites and the Jebusites and the Amorites they dwell in the mountains, and the Canaanites dwell by the sea along the banks of the Jordan. How are we going to take territory when our enemies are all over the place? Mm, I hear the negative report coming. Then Caleb, you always need some person of faith, even in the midst of difficulty that's going on. And verse number 30, the Bible said that Caleb quieted the people before Moses. Let us go up at once against the people. Y'all see that? He said, let us go up at once and take possession for we are able to overcome I know I see some obstacles in front of me, but with the help of God, God is on our side. And I'm here to remind somebody this morning, when you have God on your side, you have the majority. Amen. Come on, preacher. You may might physically look like you outnumbered, but you and God are the majority. Amen. Notice what the Bible says. Can acquire to the people in verse number 31. But, but the men who had gone up with him, we are, he noticed what they said. We are not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we are. And they gave the children of Israel a bad report of the land which they spied out, and the land in which uh, we had gone as spies in the land that devoured. He said, look, this land, it devours its own inhabitants. And all the people of whom saw it he said that there were men of great stature. He said, we saw giants in the land. And the descendants of Anak came from the giants. And we're like grasshoppers in their sights. He said, notice, in our own sight. He said, so we, are, so we were in their sight. God had called them to do something. Take possession of the land. See, when we disobey God, that's an act of defiance. And so when we don't fulfill the will of God, we miss out on the blessings that he promised us. Amen. Fear, let me say something. Walking in the will of God, fear will arrest you. But see, God wants us to trust him above the fear that we face. That's why in the book of Joshua and so many others, he said, be strong and courageous. Be not very strong and very correct because obstacles are going to come. Amen, somebody. Oh boy, oh boy, you, you had that baby and that child and that, it's so beautiful and everything and just growing up and, and you just play with the baby hair and everything. Oh, it's going to be and everything. But you know, it's some it's a, it's a tough days ahead. Because we live in a wicked world. You might train your child to do right, but everybody in this world ain't going to treat your child right. Amen, Amen somebody. You start out in this thing called marriage, amen, somebody, y'all thinner and slimmer and loving on each other, but throughout the course of time, well, he burnt you down. She said she was going to cook every day. I'm not talking about sister, I'm just talking about what other people told me about what they But there was some reality. But look, 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 even though y'all united in this thing, there will be some people that's against y'all. Come on, preacher. You preacher. Yes, Lord. There will be some obstacle. Yes. And sometimes it's an inside job for family. You better come on. Yes, Lord. Whatever fashion in your living, you going to school, you going to college, you going on campus, we even a Connecticut. What's a Connecticut? <laughs> I don't like it. They think up oh, north, they think they better than them. Mm. All you did was say what your name was. And you're just trying to attend the class. Get to where you're trying to go. But everybody's not for you. Yeah, say that. Amen. But that's all right. That's why it's important for you to go and stay with God. Amen. 
You said, look, I'm just trying to, you know, I'm just trying to get employed. I'm just trying to work my job. He said, man, we, we work for the same company. We're supposed to be on the same team. And you got the co-workers that will hate on you. Y'all was working the same position, and they offered you supervisor. Y'all used to have lunch every day, and they can't even speak to you. <laughs> we just had lunch yesterday. Because I say, yeah, even in your promotion, let me tell you something, you gonna grow more hater. Amen. Amen. You preaching. Yes, Lord. Leading and going with God doesn't mean you're gonna dismiss heartache. Mm -hmm. Come on. Notice what's happening in this text. Moses bought these people with the help of God from Pharaoh's of their oppressors. And now they find themselves in a wilderness place, in a wandering. They called out for water, God provided. They called out for food, God provided. They called out for, what, for a, a diversity of food, God provided. And God said, listen, I'm going to give you a land where y'all can set up, y'all have your own settlement, y'all have your own. He said, listen, I'm going to give it to you. There's some inhabitants there, but trust me through the process. Amen. The battle is not yours, it's the Lord's. Yes. But see, sometimes if all you are doing is walking by sight, let me tell you that. It's not over until God says so. Amen. The doctor can walk away and say, I hate you. It's nothing more that we can do. They did that to my brother. She had this debilitating disease in the 70s. They said, it's nothing more we can do. Send her home to die. Mm. She's 87 years old now. There, there, so man, let me say something. There may be limitations with others, but it's not over until God says so. Amen. Say that. See, just because you got it doesn't mean God's done. Mm -hmm. See, we're limited in our sight and time. Lord, help me to see this thing the way you want me to see it. Because I'm done with it. I'm done with them. Well, y'all on the line today? Ooh, he said, he said, listen, listen. And, and the same Moses who bought these people, who made provisions for them, who was standing as a go between between them and God, he said, but in chapter 14, they said, let us get us a new leader. That's going to get us back to Egypt. They cried for God to get them out of slavery. And now they're trying to go back. What need is going to get you back on the other side of the Red Sea? Let's select the, and look, you know what the Bible said? He said they threatened to take up stones to kill them all. The same people that praise you on one hand, ready to crucify you. Yes, Lord. You better say that. Amen. Y'all all right? That's why you got to learn to trust God, even the difficult moments. Don't allow the dissenting of the, of the voices of the negative report to deter you from the goal. God said, I've given you the land, but you always need a voice of reason. Guess what? There's somebody who trusted God. Look, Caleb said, what did God say? He said, it's your land. Oh, God said, go check it out. What I said to you is true. But see, guess what? They started looking at the people more than the promise of God. And if you're not careful, the same thing will happen to you. You will find yourself in distressing situations, distressing circumstances. Now you got problems in your marriage. Now you got problems going on with your kids. Now you, you're distracted and you can't serve the Lord no more. Amen. You're so depressed about your job. I got papers to turn in. I got this. I can't serve the Lord, but I got to turn this in and I got to turn that in. But let me say, the only way you can turn something in is because God's hands on you. In order for anything to be progress through, you need the help in the hand of God. And I told you before, self can't help. You are where you are because he is who he is. Amen, somebody. Don't you forget it. In the midst of your distress, you ought to be running to God. Lord, my family's in disarray and we need your help. Sometimes you can't reason with the people you thought you could reason with at one time. You got to invoke God in the process. Amen, somebody. I know, I know. It's a book in our government. They're talking about let's invoke Article 25 and, and let's invoke the impeachment process. But let somebody need to invoke God. Amen. Come on, praise Amen. What does work, God? Mm -hmm. I can't wait till my party get in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
The world ain't been much better with this two-party system over the course of time. <laughs> Until men and women change their hearts and turn to God, we're going to still be in a mess. So what should the people of God look to him? Amen. See, if all you do, you become paralyzed watching the news all day long. See what they breaking news, breaking news, breaking news. And it's all bad news. Yeah. Look, you, you don't watch so much news, you ain't looked at your Bible. Mm. Why y'all laughing? Yeah. Huh? God says, trust me, your anxiety begins to rise. But look, my spirit starts to settle when I look at what he said. Yeah. Yeah. See, sometimes I trust the report or the advice of others more than I do God. See, God, this is just why I can trust God, because he knows the beginning to the end. He knows the end from the beginning. Guess what? We all limited in our foresight. When this five is going to be over. Uh, well, he, I took the first vaccine, we got to take a second one, and then now it's another strength. What is we going to do? <laughs> we're limited in our foresight. We're, we're, but God's not. Nothing takes God by surprise. And guess what? We go into all of this stuff. That's what God's trying to get you to do. Look up. Y'all been so preoccupied. And, and this was going on. You were so big. And God shut stuff down. Amen. And sometimes we still can't see it. We still trying to find it. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. Oh, man. More bad news. He's trying to get you to look up. Amen. Trying to get you to look up. It looked like it's anarchy going on in the country. In the, in the country. Man, they done broke into the Capitol building. They are oppressing the police. And, and oh my goodness, what is going on? People need God. Amen. You see, the hypocrisy was you had some of that same group walking around with a sign of Jesus on it. J E S U S. See, they had a form of godliness, but they denied the power thereof because it didn't match the action. Amen. And as his people, we got to make sure that we operate on purpose. Amen. See, it's not a, we, we, we serve a great God. He has the capacity to lead us and bring us to wherever he's calling us to go. But in this whole out there, people are not, you know, they say they don't want the word no more. They, they you know, they preoccupy with so many things. That's true. That's true. The same time the world is. Look, that's what? Preach the word in season, out of season. Mm -hmm. That's the assignment. Amen. <clears throat> in season, out of season. When they mad, when they glad. When they like it, when they don't like it. Preach the word. Guess what? We need the word even when we don't want the word. Amen. You, you think <laughs> when, when I, I always want to stare at what God is showing me, I got the flesh like you got the flesh. No, we're not preaching that one this week. <laughs> no, no, no. Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> It, it ain't about you. Guess what? Guess what I've come to learn? It's not about your comfort. Mm -mm. It's all about the fulfillment of his will. It's all about the glory that he calls for. It's all about him. See, we're uncomfortable because we want it to be about us. But it's all about him. God is calling us to take territory for him. Guess what? Our assignment is New Haven and beyond. What are you working to do? This community ought to be better because we're in. Amen. Say that. People are starting to notice what we do locally, starting to get calls just for different things. People are, look, because we love, look, we ought to love our community, love this city, look, to be a witness for him. And as more connections we make, look, we're able to see a different life. I know, that, look, that the word is, look, I know several pages around, but you all got the kindest group. Amen. Amen. They smile, they say, God bless you, they. You have other groups doing the same thing, but see how you serve goes a long way. You gotta say that. Yes, Lord. Amen, somebody. Amen. I know it's cold out there. Well, the heart was out there yesterday. I had them gloves on. I said, Lord, have mercy. Yes, Lord. <laughs> but, but see, there was somebody who was blessed on the back end. Mm -hmm. It's not always about our comfort. Mm -hmm. Y'all okay? No, 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 it's time to move forward because we serve a great God. Look, it's time for you to move forward in your personal life. It's time for you to move forward, look, in your family life. It's time for you to move forward in your marriage. Look, past, present, future. Sometimes we stuck in either the past or sometimes we deterred looking for the future, but we dismiss the present. 
See, sometimes even in relationship, look, you can't move forward because all y'all doing is stuck in the past. Huh? Amen. 1983, I remember. <laughs> 87. Hold on, I got 81 back here too. But it's hard to move forward. Paul said, listen, listen, when, when it comes to the, the past successes, the things of that day, I'm forgetting those things that are behind, looking forward to those things that are ahead. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God. See, it's time for us to move forward as a church. See, he talked about, well, it was one time when we're back in the 80s and I, we was 200. Well, if you're not 200 now, you got some work to do. See, you can't just rest on your past successes. Amen. Question is, what you doing now? Amen, hey, somebody. Amen. Well, it's a pandemic going on. What do you think we're going to wait to serve God after it's over? Mm. Come on, preacher. You ain't read your Bible. Mm -hmm. You know how oppression people went through and still serve God despite it all? Amen. What makes you any different? See, sometimes we operate as if we have spiritual privilege. Mm. I'm not doing that. That's it's not my cup of tea. Lord, here am I, said to me. What you need, Lord? Who need help, Lord? I got the heart to serve, Lord. See, as a leader, you have to have an attack. Whoever walks through the door, you get the same level of service. Amen. Say that. They might not have a background that matches yours, but it's all about serving him. There's some people who didn't think you deserve. You got to say that. Come but God. Yes. Amen, somebody? Amen. That's the mindset. He's the kind of provision. He's provided jobs for you. Let me tell you something. He's provided for our children. He's provided for us when we ask for education. He provided roof over our head. Look, food on the table, transportation, the God we serve. He's the God of provision. But let me tell you something. Don't allow the negative report to deter you. And many times we do. You ain't smart enough for that. I don't know why you're going to college. You can marry your mom's daughter, Jean. Amen. Come on, preacher. See, don't allow people to put labels on you to limit you. Because mm -hmm. that's what you do. You, see, because they can't, they don't think you can. Mm -hmm. Because they're scared to apply, they don't want you to. What you going to do that for? You know they don't get that to us. Mm -hmm. Come on, that's a waste of time. I don't even know why you would even. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you got to trade, you know, change your crap. Mm -hmm. Say that. Amen. Let me tell you, you can come up with a conglomerate of the decisions you've made over time, but look, oh, sometimes you have to look at whether you're growing or staying stagnant based on the people you hang around. Amen. You preach it. If you hang around progressive people who are doing things, guess what you have a tendency to do? Do some things. Amen. If you hang around negative people who are always talking about other people, who are not progressive or pessimists, guess what you tend to do? Mm -hmm. Amen, somebody. Wake up, Paul. Don't allow, look, dissenting voices to tell you what you can't do. Why are you going to, look, why are you going to take their word as gospel when they have never done it? Come on. They know more than the people who've done it. But if you're not careful, you got to be careful based on the advice you take it from. Ain't that somebody? You got to be mindful. If you keep talking to people who, who, who disgruntled with their marriage, it's going to affect yours. You got to come on, preach. Amen. Well, mm. where have you set your mind? If all your friends are talking about school, they negative about school, man, I ain't turning it in, man, I ain't turning my camera, man, I ain't I'm just going to wait till I get the last notice and turn it all in late. Are you sure you're a Christian and child of God? That's not a God like me, Tyler. Amen. Hey, so you allow other people to influence you that might not care about their grade, but you say you want to go somewhere and be something and somebody. Come on. Sometimes you got to change your heart. It takes parents to do that. Amen. Say that. And do you know when you had 12 spies that went out, 10 that came back with a negative report, and then Joshua and Caleb were the only ones that stood up and said, let's take the land at once. Good God of mine. Let me say, sometimes the Caleb got to rise up in you. Sometimes they got to say, man, you know we're in the pandemic, and ain't that so bad? I, I, I get down at times, but see, I, I try to get myself 24 hours. I got to shake that thing off. That was yesterday. 
He blessed me with a new. I can't keep singing the same song I, because then I become stuck. Amen. Hey, you, you run into the same people. You, you saw them last week and they talk about the same thing. Mm -hmm. Yes, Lord. Six months later. Amen. Did I tell you about it? Yeah. Tell the truth. Yeah. Well, let me tell you, it's a couple more things. Mm -hmm. Son. Son, you are in control of what you focus on. Are you focusing on what God said or the report of others? Yeah, I ain't going to make it. I've been told that. It won't last. It won't survive. I know there ain't no hope. Who voice you listening to? They go, they, they might have got in the college, but I know they ain't going to finish. <laughs> you gotta say that. They don't even want to clean up at home. I know they ain't going to. <laughs> Still owe me five dollars. I, I just... What voice should you listen to? That church ain't going to work with so and so in there. Mm. Just because somebody you don't like going to the church that, that the church is doing. <laughs> but what does that say about God? If God is over the house, they let you in. <laughs> that's not serving that day, okay? Don't look at that. But that's a reality for you to know. Look, it's time to move forward because we have a great future. Focus on the promise. That's it. I've given you a land. It's going to flow with milk and honey. But then we find a disruption when you go back and read chapter 14. God offered a pronouncement because they rose up against Moses and Aaron. He said, as a result of your defiance, everybody who's 21 years and older is going to die. You, you are not going to see the promised land. The land that I promise, they're going to inherit. Your children will, but you won't. And notice this. Those who gave the negative report, they were plagued with plagues, and they died. you got to be careful about the report you give about what God said. We have a we can kind of guy. You got to be careful what you keep saying we can't do. Sometimes the reality is you don't want to. Amen. Just clarify what it is. I don't want to do it. That has nothing to do with the will of God. God wants others to be saved. See, just because just, just because you don't want to come, that don't mean we don't need to be in here. Amen. Preach, brother. Dude. I'm doing the best I can. I don't know why I ask everything because you don't want to come. I think those who come, they blessed. Might be the reason they keep coming. Amen. All variety of ages. That's just my faith, my hope, and my trust. Where, where's your hope anchored today? You remember the body of Christ. You were a teenager. You were a young adult. But how are you living out your faith? You allow the dictates of the flesh to move you. Or when you were in your circles, do they even know you trust God or believe God? People ought to be able to determine that you belong to him by how you walk, what your disposition is, how you talk. Y'all on the line today? The God we serve, he's a mighty God. He's promised us to bless you. He said, man, you guys are going to be able to take the land. It's going to be plentiful. Your families will be able to flourish as a result of it. And then you know what, you know what God said? As a result of your disbelief, as a result of you rising up against my servant, you all are going to wander 40 years each day. For the day you went to spy the land, I'm going to add a year. So you're going to wander 40 years before you enter my rest. And those... Who got the initial promise? If you're 21 and older, you're not gonna make it. Your carcasses will fall in the wilderness. See, you understand this? This is a serious thing. See, God always honors those who have faith in Him. But see, if you notice throughout the scripture, He always calls it an evil heart of unbelief. So you gotta check your heart. Whose voice? Whose report? Or you believe? Well, my wife said, and she know more scripture than me. What did God say? Well, you know, mama and them, and he, mama and ain't God. Mama going to be at the judgment, too. Amen, somebody. 
My grandma trying to tell me about you. Grandma, I'm the preacher here. Boy, you better go somewhere. <laughs> but, that, but that's the reality. That's what we all gotta learn to trust God. Amen. You gotta grow in your own faith. Because sometimes, because there are people of influence in your life, you'll take what they say over what God said. Amen. And I'm telling you right now, that's gonna lead to trouble every single time. Amen. We don't want to go do that. We don't want to go speak for yourself. Huh? What you don't want to do has nothing to do with me. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Because we are all stewards of the things that God has placed in our care. He said, man, he has given us a great promise. Uh, Revelation 2, verse 10, he said, you be faithful unto death, I'll give you a crown of life. One that faileth not away. It's, it's important for us. Listen, listen, we want heaven, lay hold of it. It's promised to us. You won't be perfect along this journey. But see, uh, what I wanted to be known, that he strove every day. He made it. He, he gave her his dead level best. She gave her her dead level best. Amen. She tried to represent the Lord the best way she could. She was flawed. He was flawed. Just like we all are. But look, there was an intentionality about their walk. Can that be said about you? Can that be named about you? But as soon as something don't go their way, they're going to throw a temper tantrum. Quit the church for six weeks and they come back. <laughs> See, you can't take church. He said, listen, man, we're about to go to battle, man. We, we, you you got to have your mind made up about what God said about this thing. Chapter 14, Joshua and Caleb. He said, only them. They're going to get in. And those 21 and under, look, that's the promise because they stood up with faith even in the midst of the difficult. Look, they stood up and spoke faith even when they were the minority. Hmm. See, God's not always with the Lord through. Amen. But what he's looking for, who's really standing for me? Who's standing for me? Are you standing for me in your home? Are you standing for me in school? Are you standing for me on that college campus? Are you standing for me on that job? Are you standing for me? Or, 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 or are you only representing yourself? We serve a great God. Don't allow the negative report of others to deter you from God's purpose. And if he's given us a great future, heaven is promised to those who are faithful to him. Guess what? All I want to do is be found faithful. Everybody's not going to like you. I'm just telling you right now. It doesn't matter. You can get a haircut and everything. You can get press on nails, get your eyebrow arched. You can do it all. And so, her face is beat too much. That ain't my cut. I don't like a lipstick. His hairline back too far. It's like you can't. You drive and they walk in. Amen. You can't. say that. Who wears a white suit in the winter? What's wrong? You, you can't. That's the reality. But you know what? Long God love me. Amen. Amen, somebody. somebody. Because people who promise that they love you, they, they, they talk about you. Hurt your feelings, but that's okay. They did it to my father. They, they did it to Christ. They did it to the apostles. They did it to the prophets. Moses has been plenty of times. The Lord said, Lord, did I hurt these people? Lord, you put them on me. They, now they, all I'm trying to do is tell them what you told me, and now they're trying to kill me. <laughs> See, serving God, not always easy. But it's worth it. When he comes, I want to be found faithful. Amen. When it be based on a sports analogy, our coaches always say, look, go hard or go home. Amen. He's personal pronoun. This is my gym. Anybody put my jersey on, they better go hard. And that'd be the last time they put it on. See, this, this, this is the mentality. You got to leave it all on the floor. Not to live full and die empty. That, that's the reality to the circumstance. How are you living today? Well, it's church time. Let me go in here and sleep, and then I'll be able to I have my energy when I get this time. <laughs> y'all ain't know what I do? I tell y'all to read mine. He about through. He about to get the clothes behind him. He does it. He about to say him. Amen. He three minutes over the last week. I don't know. But see, that's the thing. We ought to rush some other things instead of the word of God. We need, look, you just turn on the tap. We need God, man. Yes, Lord. Amen. He 
You see what's going on in this country? We need more of God. So that we can operate with a certain level of civility. We need God. And guess what? God has called you to be a promoter for him. Amen. Amen. Y'all used to promote parties, DJ so and so will be in the house, you gonna need it. And you send it all out. We, we need to promote the Lord. Amen. You need to come to my yeah, you need to come to my church. Yeah. We got all awesome membership. Amen. Preaching ain't half bad. I'm telling you, we're doing all right. <laughs> that, that's some that, that, that's not what you promote. Girl, that sale on it. Makes you know they going out, someone don't got a going out of bed. We promote so many other things. Yeah. But what about when it comes to the will and the word of God? All, all I know is in, in the end, I want to be found faithful. Joshua and Caleb's name was called because they stood even in the day of reversal. You got to call your name. If you don't know Jesus in the parking lot, you said you need to get to know him today. Come to him by hearing the gospel. How his son died, he was buried, rose again the third day according to the scripture. Believe that same message. Repent of your sins. Make a change of mind will send these to a change of action. Be willing to uh, confess the sweetest name ever other than the more mortal tongue. Be willing to be baptized today in water for the remission of sin. You don't want to be caught not ready. That's all unprepared to be God. You don't want to be unprepared. Especially when he's giving you every opportunity to get it right. Guess what? The loss is on you. He's giving you opportunity. It's all about what you do with the opportunity this year. He saved today. If you're a member of the body of Christ, you're going through something and you need a prayer request, uh, please make that known. We'll pray for you. We're about to stand and we're about to sing the Savior's invitation. Come to Jesus. There's somebody who wants to be saved today. Young man, young woman, mom, dad, brother, sister, come on. Come on to Jesus today. Oh, to Jesus I surrender. Every time I wake up in the morning, I fall down on my knees and pray. Well, I thank God for opening up my eyes and blessing me just to see another day.